What do you feel when you see the flag? Independent. Honored. Symbolic. Freedom of speech. Sense of home. I don't want to say pride because... What's the first word that comes to mind about the American flag? I just want to hear your opinion. Yeah. Oh, okay. She said racism. I would have never said that. <laughs> what the hell? Entirely different generations, because from my era... In the U.S., everyone seems to feel some way about the American flag. Our national anthem is an ode to our flag. No other country has that. But exactly how you feel about the flag depends on who you are. And possibly how old you are. In an exclusive NBCLX YouGov poll from February of over 1,200 Americans, 68% of adults over 55 said the American flag makes them feel very proud, compared to just 29% of those aged 18 to 34. To explore how Americans feel about the flag across generations, we're going to two neighborhoods in the United States, one with flags and one with not very many. This is Tag Team, the flag and us. Each generation of my dad's side of the family, they all were a part of a war. My mom and my great-grandfather and my grandpa all have served for the Marines. I see a lot of veterans here, a lot of veterans. Did you know that it was designated most patriotic small town? Get out of town. Gallup, <laughs> really? Maybe the older generations can see it in that sense. Train going by. <laughs> I think they say there's about 110, 120 trains that come through a day. This is Ken Reed. Gallup, New Mexico, most patriotic small town in America. And we had these coins made after we had earned that title. In 2013, he was visiting his fellow veteran friend, Hershey Miyamura, a Medal of Honor recipient. Hershey brought up a national contest for most patriotic small town, and Ken was inspired. He wrote an essay, made this video, and got lots of people to vote. Long story short, went and checked the, route, the site, and sure enough, Gallup had won. The community really took great pride in that. The contest was discontinued the next year, so technically Gallup still holds that title. It seems like sometimes we're kind of in a little time capsule, and people can leave Gallup and come back 20 years later and nothing's changed. Hi, my name is Patricia and I live in Inglewood, California, and I'm here doing an interview with NBC, NBC LX. LX, and this is my first time doing what I'm doing. <laughs> That's Patricia. We'll get back to her in a bit, but first, let's meet her grandson. All right, good afternoon, good afternoon. Marcus grew up in South Los Angeles. His family has been living in Inglewood for about six years now. Do you see a lot of flags in this neighborhood? Not quite, no. Um, I would say I only seen about two to three flags, really. We went on a scavenger hunt to see if we could find any flags in the neighborhood. All right, so the game, find the first flag and point it out. Yeah. Uh, ooh. After walking for about 20 minutes, we found one. Turns out, it was actually right next door to his grandma's. The only time I only saw a flag daily and consistently was when I would go to school. We would consistently recite the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. That Pledge of Allegiance isn't only recited while looking at the flag in public schools across America. It's also a pledge to the flag. Mark Leibson is a journalist who wrote a history of the American flag from its origins to the 21st century. 1892, this is when the Pledge of Allegiance was born. This is the beginning of what historians have called the cult of the flag, okay? The almost religious-like feeling that Americans have for, our, for the Stars and Stripes. Um, this is when we had the movement for the Flag Day national holiday. All of that was at its height, I would say, during when, when my generation, the baby boomers, grew up in the 50s and 60s. That's, that's something that's ingrained in you from a, a child. For Ken, patriotism is rooted in family military history. That's why he built an exhibit at the Comfort Suites he manages in town. And for myself too, I you know, served eight years active duty military to have you know, service related disability and it's been beneficial and healing for myself too, 
to be able to create a place like this for veterans, for military, for families. You can come over to my hotel and every picture, every flag, everything that's up, I have a story about it. You know, and, and it comes from here. It's not just, oh, I'm gonna you know, slap up this American flag sticker and that makes me, I'm a patriot now. So how did the American flag become synonymous with patriotism for so many? For the first third of our nation's history, from when the flag was born in 1777, until the start of the Civil War in 1861, you know, it was almost unheard of for individual Americans to fly the flag. It was mostly flown by the government, mostly by the military as a signaling and communications device, you know, before the age of, you know, electronic communications. This changed almost on a dime. People have written that when the U.S. flag came down at Fort Sumter at the start of the Civil War, it went up everywhere in the North. Most of the developments in the cultural meaning of the flag coincide with wars. World War II, we had the famous photograph of the flag raising at Iwo Jima, the most reproduced photograph of the 20th century. True. And then that's, of course, with my grandfather. What, what do you think of when you see this flag? I'm, like, you know, I'm a little choked up over it. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Justice for all. Justice for all. Justice for all. Where is the justice for all when there's only justice for most? And so we need to make sure that the justice for all statement really serves its purpose as it's written. You know, we can see the injustices. And so because in America there's various ethnicities, but we're still kind of uh, divided and conflicted and with liberty, with restrictions. So many people do get their justice in this country, but is it really all? I, I don't think all. No, it's not. But then, that's your perspective of it, but it do symbolize justice for all. I, I, I agree with you to a certain extent, but I do stand on there is justice for all. In our MBCLX YouGov poll, just 44% of black people said they would feel comfortable driving or walking through a neighborhood with a lot of American flags displayed, compared to 66% of white respondents. I wouldn't feel nothing. I would love to see that. A lot of people despise the flag and they don't even know why. You know, because a lot of people are so bitter and so angry. It don't matter if the flag is red, blue, green, or yellow. While we were doing this interview, Patricia's granddaughter happened to arrive at their home. So we asked her granddaughter what she thought of when she saw the American flag. Can you tell us what your granddaughter said? She said racism. I would have never said that. <laughs> why do you think she said racism? Because of what's going on today all the violence, all the injustice, everything that's going on around the world, because it's not just here, it's everywhere. And what do you think about that? Well, ain't nothing changed from the beginning to the end. It's always, I've been like that, because I tell you, this generation now, they don't have no respect for the flag and nobody else. And if they don't have respect for their parents, how would they have respect for the flag? because there's a lot of places where people can't speak their mind. The flag represents a whole lot. It stands for justice, peace, equality. The last year has plastered images of flags in different contexts in the minds of Americans. The Black Lives Matter flag flew high during the racial justice protests over the summer of 2020. And in 2021, the Capitol riot was peppered with American flags. I feel that those people had their own agendas, but to give them the label of uh, that's what a, an American does, I, I wouldn't want to place that, that uh, stamp on their forehead. When it became ugly and violent like that, you know, that's when it changes from exercising your right to free speech to being a terrorist. And, you know, lots of brave men and women have died for, have given us that right. Ken's life has been shaped by his love for the flag, but he also respects those who feel differently. 
you know, and I understand it can be a bit overwhelming you come in here and maybe even to some people a little creepy. <laughs> There's just so much stuff and that's okay. You're not dishonoring what we have going on here. It's more so you're honoring because you have that freedom of speech to say, to express your opinions about it. Here we have pillars honoring all those who have served from this, from the Gallup area, I guess. Gallup is surrounded by the Navajo Nation, and many residents have ties to the area, like Ken, whose wife is Navajo. Yeah, because this was presented to me by actually an Air Force, Air National Guard, being, being a military veteran, and then of course my wife being Native American, and then kind of honoring both our, our heritage. During World War II, Navajo code talkers were recruited by the U.S. military to help troops communicate securely in the Pacific. Ken thinks this legacy helped inspire the patriotism of many Gallup residents. People seem to be more patriotic and wanting to do their patriotic duties of voting or, you know, just serving. You, know, you don't have to serve in the military, you know, to serve your community. And just because you don't have a flag up doesn't make you not patriotic. We all have our various perspectives and again, we're all underneath the One Nation. And so uh, through cooperation, through looking at uh, how we can all collaborate and work together, we can find various solutions to solve worldly problems and motivation towards our own individual desires. That's good. I like that. That's good. I like that. Yeah.